Governor John Kasich has served as Governor of Ohio since 2011. Governor, what would you do with the so-called sanctuary cities? In San Francisco, we saw that god-awful murder of that beautiful young mother by an illegal immigrant with a criminal. Well, I think they're going to be eliminated, Jack. I mean, this is a Republican and Democrat agreement there. In terms of immigration, I mean, obviously the border needs to be secured. There needs to be an expanded guest worker program so people can move in and out and support their family, but do it in a legal way. Uh, with the 12 million, we need to find out who they are. If they're law-abiding, God-fearing folks, uh, they're going to have to pay a penalty uh, towards legalization, and they'll have to wait. And, um, you know, I think it's border. It's a reasonable guest worker program. It's f and the ones who are the 12 million, if they violate the law, they're going to have to be deported or, or put in prison. Um, and, and I think at the same time, we just we clearly need to make sure that, uh, that we can protect who gets in and out of this country. And once we put something into effect like that, anybody who comes in has got to be sent home. No one should be confused about it. Are you a fan of NAFTA? Has it been a net gain for the U.S.? You know, my problem with NAFTA is real simple, and that is uh, if the American worker doesn't get protected. And here's what I mean by that. I have a friend that runs a steel company. He says that these foreign uh, countries are dumping product in this country, destroying people's jobs. It takes us like two years to find out if they're cheating. You can't wait two years. Somebody's family's being destroyed. Their jobs are being destroyed. It's pulling down communities. So, Jack, we need an expedited process. I'm basically a free trader, but I'm a fair trader. And if it makes sense, uh, we'll go forward with it. But we've got to make sure that we have a mechanism in place to make sure that when people cheat, that we call them on it and we take action. You, you asked a question about the economy, if, if I could just speak yeah. on that for a second. You know, I was chairman of the budget committee when we balanced the federal budget. I was one of the chief architects, and our economy took off. You remember uh, that in the late 90s and in the early 2000s, we were growing. Why? We cut taxes. We balanced budgets. It made sense. I became governor of Ohio. We were $8 billion in the hole. We cut taxes. We balanced budgets. We're now $2 billion in the black. We're up 350,000 jobs. Cutting, uh, cutting taxes, balancing budgets is what works to job, drive economic growth. Your answer on your own there got to a question that Tim in Hollis, New Hampshire has asked, and that is balancing the budget. To paraphrase his question, he and his wife have to live with a, a budget in the yeah. household, and they don't understand why Washington is the antithesis and doesn't live with a budget. What faith can you give to them that if you're elected president, you balance, the ba budget was yes. balanced once before, but now it hasn't happened. How is Washington going to live with the same fiscal discipline that households here in New Hampshire and apartments and condominiums have to live with every week between groceries and heating and kids and budget and mortgage? How do we get Washington to live within its means? Well, Jack, first of all, we need a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution, which I have been pushing since I was a very young man and been traveling the country trying to get that done, number one. Number two, look, it's about record and accomplishment. I was there. I spent 10 years of my life balancing the budget, not because of numbers, but because of values. Just the values when people have to balance their budgets, so should the government. And in addition to that, we don't have the right to live high on the hog and put the bills on our children. That is immoral. So I spent 10 years uh, working at it. Uh, frankly, we got it balanced with uh, Senator Domenici and, and the Clinton administration. We got it done. And we can do it. We can do it again. It's, it is, it is uh, politically challenging. But frankly, the effort to get there is not that complicated. I've written only about 16 budgets in my lifetime, including the one that took Ohio from $8 billion in the hole to $2 billion in the black. These things can be done, but they don't necessarily have to be done by, by killing programs or chopping programs. You make them work better. So that couple, I'm President of the United States. My number one priority is to get us on a road map to a balanced federal budget to create jobs in America. Thank you, Governor. Thank you.